So Mark, you mentioned that WordFence really changed in a big way in 2015. I'd be curious to hear more about the evolution of WordFence since then. Yeah. So, I mean, up until that point, uh, Kerry and I had been hands-on doing everything and most of my role was dev and ops, um, you know, running the, um, the business from an operational perspective and also releasing very regular updates to the product. Um, as soon as we started hiring in 2015, I think one of the best things that I did is I immediately stopped uh, coding and started focusing on things like marketing um, and, and gradually beginning the process of transitioning into being a business executive. Um, and it was a really weird feeling because, you know, you're, you're working so hard as a developer, you're writing all the code and your sort of measure of your personal worth is, you know, how, how much code I've written and how many features I've released and so on. And all of a sudden someone else is doing that and there's the sense of guilt <laughs> that yeah, you have to get yeah. over, you know, like I'm, I'm not coding. Like, what am I, what am I supposed to be doing now? Yeah. You know, but um, w once I sh had shifted into the mode of um, growing the business, uh, I be it began to make more sense. And, um, you know, I think I, I mentioned to you in an earlier conversation, we hired about seven or eight people uh, that year and then continued to hire, um, you know, as the, as, as the, the years uh, progressed. And uh, we spent a lot of time recruiting the right people for the team uh, and some very, very core people that are still with us today and are very senior in the organization. I think one of the folks that uh, came on board in 2015 is... Um, Colette Chamberlain, who um, today runs security for the entire business. She is responsible for us getting our ISO uh, 27001 certification, which is a very big deal. Um, you know, it's, it, it is a uh, certification that gives us uh, the ability to take a holistic view at our organization's security, uh, the security of our code, um, you know, our, our supply chains, our people, and so on. And uh, it has massively reduced the likelihood of WordFence itself getting hacked, which could potentially impact 5 million websites, right? So we're ISO 27001 certified. Colette did that, and she's also very involved with uh, legal these days and, and so on. Um, so very senior in the organization. She's, she's still with us after, uh, what is it, nine years now? Um, and we have uh, several other people like that that have really grown with the organization. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. And I, th I think that speaks to the smart hiring decisions that we made early on where we were very picky about who we brought on board. And we still are. Um, and we have an amazing team um, of, I think, just under 40 people these days. And, um, you know, we, we grew very steadily from 2015 up till now to, to that team size. Um, but you're, you're asking about the evolution of the business as a whole after 2015? Yeah, it sounds like WordFence itself has served a lot of different functions and sort of grown to fit the needs of, you know, the market over time. Yeah, we've definitely adapted to uh, the changing market landscape. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would say just to sort of go back to our growth evolution, um, you know, there's the people component. Um, one of the things that we realized early on as we started hitting very big numbers, you know, we passed a million installations out there. Um, we realized that we are in charge of an enormous attack surface across the web that allows us to gather a huge amount of um, data, um, you know, with all the appropriate uh, privacy constraints, um, you know, a added to that statement um, on, on who's attacking WordPress websites right now, um, what are the attacks, uh, where are they originating from, what do the patterns look like, and so on. And so f from pretty early on, we started building a, a threat intelligence organization, and we had to figure out how to ingest um, a huge number of uh, attacks every month into a, a platform where we could actually mine the data. And um, you know, very quickly, we moved away from MySQL to uh, um, or Aurora, you know, which is the AWS MySQL equivalent, uh, into a, um, a much larger uh, big data platform that was queryable um, and could ingest data at the rate that we, we needed it to be ingested at. And we could then mine that and look at 
um, what the most common attack patterns are, are, are out there and so on. And that was kind of the genesis of our, our uh, platform these days that we call, uh, today that we call WTI, um, was that initial ingestion of all that data into the, uh, the big data platform that we could just query with a, a, you know, uh, a queryable uh, interface. Um, so it's gotten much more sophisticated. We have a lot more moving parts now, um, but uh, that's how the organization evolved. And then as far as the teams, you know, they kind of evolved around that where we've got our, uh, our, our dev team that works on uh, the plugin and various other products, um, internal and, and um, customer facing. Uh, and QA and, and operations and so on. But then there's a, you know, almost an entirely separate part of the organization, which is our uh, threat intelligence team that is working around WTI, working to determine, you know, what the newest threats are, um, ingesting the data and so on. And then more recently over the last, I would say two years, uh, we have really started to fund external research into WordPress vulnerabilities specifically. And uh, we have a bug bounty program now that is um, uh, the biggest uh, bug bounty program for WordPress in the world. Um, and you can measure that by a few different metrics, but I guess the one that you can look at is how much we spend uh, funding that research. In the last six months, we've spent over a quarter million dollars that we've paid out to um, vulnerability researchers that are outside of the company as uh, awards for vulnerabilities that they have reported to our bug bounty program, which of course go through a responsible disclosure process, working with a vendor to get them fixed before they're you know, disclosed to the public. Um, what, what we do is we'll uh, also turn those vulnerabilities into firewall rules as soon as they come in that we then roll out in real time to our paid customers um, that provides immediate protection against that threat. Um, so that's kind of how we've evolved, you know, and how the teams have evolved over time.